the Trinity Reform in the Church of Christ on this special night. I want to thank you for joining us here online as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we hope that you are truly fed by our worship of God during this very special time of year. This is not the Christmas Eve service that we hope for. And this is certainly a new way of doing a candlelight service. But just as we found a new way of doing church each and every week and being invited into your home, to be able to still continue to worship through this pandemic. We also have found a new way of doing our Christmas Eve service with communion and with candlelight. So at this time, I wanted to express to you our, how much we do miss you. Uh, Judy, you have, would like to also? Every time that I am liturgist and I stand up here, you cannot imagine how much you are missed, and especially on this most holy night, you are missed more than ever. Merry Christmas, stay safe and healthy, and have a blessed New Year. And while we understand that many of you long for the time that we can worship together, and this candlelight service will be much different from the ones in the past, we hope that we can bring you some memories of Christmas Eve's past and continue to be the church in any and all circumstances of life. I want to remind everyone that we will be having a communion tonight, and so I ask you to have your either cracker or bread available, as well as wine or juice uh, for, our, for our communion. And also, I'd ask if you have a candle that you can light during our candlelight service that will help to bring the candlelight service into your home in a special way. So now, let us light our last, our, our light, the Christ candle of Advent. Rejoice, people of God, the light has come into the world. Oh God, now we light the candles of your activity. With the company of heaven, Jesus, the Word has come to dwell among us. 
Break forth into singing, people of God. Your comfort and your salvation are at hand. In Christ, we are empowered as God's children. We are gifted with grace and truth. Sing a new song and marvel at God's. Make a joyful noise through all the earth. We celebrate the true light that enlightens us. We rejoice in the gift of new life. Let us join together singing Angels We Have Heard on High, found on your screen. <laughs>
So let us confess our sins by reciting, by reciting the prayer of confession found on your screens. God of all worlds, we confess that we seek to create our own limited reality in which you have no part. We do not sense your glory or sing your praise. By our words and deeds, we deny Jesus as our brother and reject Christ as Savior. We deal falsely with one another, caring more for our own reputation and comfort than for the common good. Oh God, we plead for forgiveness by your holy arm. Lead us to victory over our selfish impulses and uphold us in your steadfast love. Now let us confess our personal sins in silence. Lord, hear our prayers. We are assured that all the earth will see the salvation of our God. Forgiveness is available for all who seek to respond to God's love and do God's will. Our Creator claims us in the midst of time and for all eternity. God anoints us with oil of gladness. We are empowered to be God's children, full of grace and truth. <laughs> children, so I ask the kids, please gather around your computer screens, and I have a couple questions for you tonight. So first of all, I want to know if you can tell me the story of Jesus' birth. You think you can do that? You think you can tell me, if you were here tonight, what the story of Jesus' birth was all about? Can you tell me where Jesus was born? Bethlehem, right? Bethlehem, and he was born in a manger. Now, a manger is a trough to feed animals. And the Bible tells us that Mary wrapped him in bands of cloth and put him in a manger. Now, why do you think that was done in the first place? Well, the angels told the shepherds out in the fields that they could identify Jesus by a baby wrapped in, the, in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And they would know that this is truly the Messiah. And that way, the shepherds knew the baby was that newborn king that they were searching for. They found him with Mary and Joseph wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in that manger. And God helped those shepherds find Jesus. And God helps us today to find Jesus as well. But how do you think we do? How do we find Jesus in our day today? Where do we find him? Well, one place we find him is here in church, learning his teachings. And another place is in our hearts when we accept Christ as our Savior who gave us forgiveness and eternal life and especially in the things that we do for others. That's how Christ, we can find Jesus in our hearts. So we can find Jesus in some pretty amazing places and unexpected places as well. So you have to be alert and looking for Christ in the hearts of other people and all in the world around you. And that's my challenge for you. I want you to find Jesus in the things that you do. Look for Jesus' teachings when you play, when you go to school, or even when you're at home. What are those teachings, though? What did Jesus teach us? He taught us to love God and to love our neighbor. That's right. So we are to be kind and help and care for other people. And that's what I want you to do. We should do that all year long, not just at Christmas time. So... You think you can try to do that all year long to find Jesus in the things that you do by helping and caring for others all around you? I bet you can. Let's pray. God of the manger, help us to find Jesus in our daily routines. Help us use Jesus' teachings when we are with others and help us know the risen Christ in our hearts all year long. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
At this time, we have some special music by Rachel Church. The first Noel, the angels didn't say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the King of Israel. May look at saw a star shining in the east beyond them far and to the earth it gave great light and so it continued both day and night. No prophecy regarding the birth of Israel's Savior. Isaiah describes the impact of the Savior, one who brings light, hope, release from bondage, and loving authority and direction. Isaiah emphasizes permanence in the change this child will bring into the world, beginning in verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their bar burden and the bar across their shoulders 
the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends our first reading. Our gospel reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Luke's gospel places the birth of Jesus Christ into the context of human history. He describes the angelic announcement of Christ's birth to the shepherds, the outcast of that time. They are the first to see Jesus. This reflects Luke's point of view that God sent Jesus to outcasts first, beginning in verse 1. In those days, the decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In the, that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you, to you to, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, as it had been told them. Blessed are those who hear the word of our God and believe. Let us pray. Gracious and most holy God, we thank you for the birth of your Son, our Savior. This night we celebrate life, the life that came into this world to reconcile your people to your will of love and righteousness. We celebrate Jesus' birth, Jesus' teachings, and Jesus' life, a life that teaches us how to love. May we use Christ's example to model our own lives so that we might learn to love you with all of our hearts, minds, soul, and strength, and to also love each other, not just during this season of Christmas, but throughout the whole year as well. Bless us this evening as we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be pleasing and acceptable to you this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The story we just heard from Luke's Gospel is retold to us in many forms. Through lyrics of Christmas carols, nativity scenes, large and small, holiday cards, children's Christmas pageants, and so many other ways as well. For many of us, the story is familiar ground. At every point, we know what comes next. But something so familiar 
contained within it unexpected depths. I'd like you to consider this night one phrase in Luke's Christmas story to which we pay little attention, and it is this. The baby Jesus was wrapped in bands of cloth. Some of us may remember older translation where it was wrapped in swaddling bands. Now this action undertaken by the child's mother is mentioned twice in the Christmas story. Once when it happens right after the baby's birth, and again when the angel speaking to the shepherds tells them where to find him and promises that this will be a sign to them. They will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. First, it must be said that there's nothing Nothing really unusual in, in, uh, in how Jesus just moments after his birth was wrapped in cloth, uh, bands of cloth. This was done for babies in that time and place. They were kept in this confinement for as long as two or three years to ensure that they would grow up straight and well-formed. Nobody would consider swaddling a baby to be remarkable in itself. Yet the angel mentions the wrappings of Jesus to the shepherds. And the writer of Luke's gospel tells us about it not once, but twice. So perhaps more is going on here than meets the eye. The reference to bands of cloth wrapped around this baby could be a reminder of a passage in the Book of Wisdom found in the Apocrypha, which are those books of the Catholic Bible that we don't give much credit. And in that passage, the speaker is King Solomon. He's explaining that he, like the rest of us, a mortal, molded in his mother's womb, who once born began breathing the same air as everyone else. More than that, he goes on to tell us that he was nursed with care in swaddling cloths. And that was from Wisdom, the Book of Wisdom, chapter 7, verses 1 through 4. So Solomon, the son and successor of King David, is wrapped in bands of cloth as a baby. Centuries later, Jesus is born of the house of David as a son and successor of David in an even greater sense. He too is wrapped in bands of cloth. And like Solomon, he is a king. His confinement in the bands of cloth is important enough to be part of the angel's announcement to the shepherd when glory lights up the sky in the fields outside of Bethlehem. Can you picture that scene? A newborn, a prisoner, confined in swaddling cloths, like Solomon, he's, a, he's David's son, and a king far greater than Solomon or David. This Jesus is captive, a captive in swaddling claws, and so, so much more. But no confinement can keep him captive. He escapes the cloth bands as babies do because he outgrows them. He grows up, he leaves them behind as he becomes first a toddler, then a boy, then a man. He escapes the constraints of swaddling claws, and of course, this is only normal. But he escapes other constraints as well. The religion into which he is born is high and holy one, leading many to a life with God. Yet it is characterized by hundreds of requirements, some of them far from God's word on how to live life. His religious practice is often concerned with remaining separate from others whether those others are sinners among his own people, or heretical Samaritans, or godless Gentiles, or oppressive Romans. Wrapped up tightly in these, tightly in these swaddling claws, Jesus struggles hard to escape, and he succeeds. The Gospels are loaded with stories of how he does so. He reached out beyond the swaddling claws of religious restriction and social custom to demonstrate compassion toward the rejected leper, the marginalized sinner, and numerous others who are deemed unacceptable. That Jesus finds his freedom means that they find theirs as well. People expect to see babies outgrow what they wear in infancy. They do not expect to see adults outgrow the taboos that normally remain unquestioned. Therefore, the Gospels recount the conflict that ensues when the contemporaries of Jesus witness the spectacle of him escaping from the swaddling claws of the culture they accepted and supported. For this trouble, they place him on a cross to die and consign him to a tomb. Now past 30 years old, his body is again bound in strips of cloth. Again, he escapes. 
beyond natural growth, beyond liberation from cultural bondage. Jesus breaks even the power of death. He shows himself the true king, one greater than Solomon, greater than David, for his reign is to be forever. He wants to reign in every social situation, in every human heart. The Bethlehem crib leads to the Jerusalem tomb. One sort of confinement leads to another. And the Son of God, the Son of Mary, escapes them all into ever-increasing and irreversible freedom. This freedom he opens up for all his sisters and brothers, all of us who are created to reign with him. On this night, the newborn baby is wrapped in swaddling bands for us. When we celebrate his, his Eucharist, we announce his death and resurrection, which took place for us. The mystery of Jesus is an indivisible whole. The cross meant for the man is already present in the cloth wrapped around the child. And all this happens for us. Jesus comes to lead the way for all of us out of confinement toward the freedom which is intended for us. And so each of us may ask ourselves, how am I bound? What is it that imprisons me? For whatever it may be that wraps us and holds us prisoner, we can be certain that for this, the baby is born and becomes a man who dies and rises again. Whatever it may be that wraps us up and holds us prisoner, the true king has arrived to lead us out of the darkness and into the bright sunshine of life that is life indeed. How are you bound? How are you confined? What holds you prisoner? Perhaps it's fear, maybe anger, shame, or even grief. It may be a broken relationship, a betrayed vocation, a crushing cultural norm, or even a refusal to trust God. It may be a persistent sense of unworthiness, an episode from your past, harsh words spoken by someone in authority. And of these and many more may be the bands that hold us prisoner. They may turn us into Egyptian mummies, lifeless, dried up, ready to fall into dust. But tonight, strange to say, a king is born in a stable. He is wrapped in bands of cloth and eventually outgrows them. He experiences every way we humans have to stifle our lives, and he breaks free from them. He is killed on a cross, consigned to a tomb, dressed in grave clothes, but he leaves them behind. Christ is the eternal escape artist, able to free himself and us from every set of shackles. Tonight, we rejoice that he calls us to freedom with him. May we rise and follow where our Lord and Savior leads. Amen. Let us now continue our hymn, our service with our hymn of response, O Little Town of Bethlehem, found on your screens. <laughs>
This is a time of our service when we remind you to take notes of the people mentioned in our joys and concerns. And join your list today with the, uh, with the one from last week and place it on your refrigerator, on your nightstand, on your coffee table, anywhere that will remind you to share God's love with others through our prayers. This is a vital ministry here at Trinity and one that's had some amazing results. Today, I'd like to start with prayers for Sheila Kressler, who lost her son Josh recently. Prayers for comfort, peace, and hope at this special time of the year. Continued prayers for Alan Kyle. Alan not only suffered a stroke, but while he was in rehab, he also contracted COVID-19 as well. Jane reported that he has mild symptoms and his rehab will in fact continue. So prayers for strength, healing, and comfort as Alan recuperates. And please keep Wayne Lutz in your prayer. Wayne was a former pastor of First UCC in Berwick. His daughter just passed away from COVID-19. Keep the Lutz and Pollock families in your prayers. And also keep Pastor Sandy Murphy of Christ Church in Cunningham in your prayers, as Sandy is at Guy Sears Rehab Facility with a compression fracture in her neck. She is in a great deal of pain and prayers would be greatly appreciated. Also, Sandy Buck has asked that we keep in prayer her friend's mother, Alice, who is 101 years old and has contracted COVID-19. Prayers for God's protection and healing presence. And also, we just got word before we came to church tonight that Bloomsburg Police Department and Bloomsburg Fire Department will be going door to door on the west end of Bloomsburg from Railroad Street West, warning people that if they hear the sirens during the night, they need to get out of the area quickly as the flood, the flood waters will be rising rapidly. So please keep those who are affected by the possible flooding in your prayers throughout this weekend, as we may need, they may need our prayers greatly uh, if the flood does in fact rise into their homes. And as always, I remind you to send in your joys and concerns to us through the emails, text, or phone, and we'll be sure to include them in our next service. So now, let us pray. Child of Bethlehem, lover of humanity, our crucified and risen Savior, grant that we may know the word that gives light and life. Shine through us with joyous testimony to your truth so that we may live that we may live your will and make your love known to all we meet. Link us with one another as your beloved children who respond to your glory with gracious and truthful living. As tonight, we ask mindfully that watch over and comfort our friends in Christ, such as our homebound, those in life care centers, those on our prayer list, as well as those named here today. We celebrate with you the saints of this church that serve your people with such love. Now in a moment of silence, we ask you to hear those prayers that are too private to speak out loud. Lord, hear our prayers. May we keep these people in our hearts, in our minds, and in our prayers as we go through this next week. And let us pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. The ends of the earth will see the victory of our God when we give our best toward the realization of God's reign. Our offerings and our lives testify to what we really believe. As heirs of abundance, we have much to share. So therefore, let us consider going to the church's website at www.trinityreformucc.org and present your offerings to God online or by sending in your check, your church envelopes as best as you are able.
God, for the word that came to live among us, bringing life and a vision of glory. Thank you for your steadfast love and faithfulness, even when we have not listened or responded to your will. May this offering represent our growing awareness of the larger vision to which you call us. We dedicate these tokens toward sharing the light of the season among the principalities and powers that seek to wrest the world from your hands. Draw our hearts to follow our treasure into the work you want us to do. Amen. Let us now celebrate the Lord's Supper. All are welcomed at this table. You need not be a member of Trinity Reformed UCC to partake in the elements. Here, we also allow children to partake in communion with the permission of their parents. For those online, we ask that you have your bread or cracker available and your juice or wine prepared as well. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. Therefore, this table is for all who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. In the, in the presence, presence of all who hunger, hunger for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the sharing of this life-giving meal. God be with you and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, your son, our savior, who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. We celebrate Christ's life. We remember Christ's death and we rejoice in Christ's resurrection. We take courage in the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst with all the prophets, martyrs, and saints, and all the company of heaven, we glorify your holy name. Jesus then took the cup and after giving thanks, gave it to the disciples saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Come Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless us in our eating and drinking at this table that our eyes may be open and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst and in one another. In, in the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. Come, for all things are ready.
Please take your bread or cracker or wafer and hold it up. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. Now take your cup of juice or wine and lift it up. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. We give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ strengthen our faith, faith increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world with courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of your most Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the blessing and permission found on your screens. How beautiful are the messengers who announce peace how welcome is the news of our salvation. We have been given a new song to sing. We will make a joyful noise to our God. God who spoke through the prophets, speak to us. God who sent Jesus also has a mission. While the earth is our home, we are its stewards. People of the earth are neighbors and kin. As John witnessed to the light, so are we to do. We are empowered to become children of God. We will live our acceptance of God's gift. We will trust God and witness to the light. Amen. This is the time of our lighting of our candles from the Christ candle. Since we cannot do that in person, we are going to do it, of course, virtually. So I ask that you get your candles together and please light them as I read the first part of our liturgy. Hope, peace, joy, love. Four candles, four promises that have guided our steps in the Advent journey. They point to the central candle, to the one light, the Christ candle, celebrating Jesus whose birth has drawn us here this night. Together, come to us, Lord Jesus, be born in us tonight, in our heart, our minds, our lives. May the light of your life be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us. God for us, God in us. Amen. At this time, please make sure, please have your candles lit as we sing Silent Night and see past Christmas services where we did that in person.
hear this passion of benediction. In this time of COVID, may we break free from the isolation and loneliness that comes with it by reaching out to others on the phone, in an email, or even with a letter or card. Just as we have learned to be the church in a new way, we can continue to care for and love each other in new ways that keep us safe and bring about an end to this pandemic. May your Christmas be one of love, joy, hope, and peace. And may you be blessed by the grace that comes from the one true God. Merry Christmas. And now let us close our service tonight with joy to the world on your screens. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.